just passed a new law effectively killing the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution as we know it. There will be no such thing as online privacy anymore for any citizen. And this seems to be just the beginning, as the government today has taken total executive control over Google, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and various other online. technology has incredible promise in the infrastructure. Uh, look, I think it has incredible promise in infrastructure beyond our securities markets, um, shipping, you know, countless other places where, you know, a verified record uh, is something that we spend a lot of money making sure we have, and the efficiencies added by distributed ledger technology, you know, we can bring that. I mean, look, in government, I mean, you know, I can remember as a young as a young kid going down to the uh, uh, registrar's office with my grandfather because you know properties and liens and everything had to be registered. How many how many how many debt deals have you done where you had to refile all the UCCs where you had to you know ensure that you had liens on property and Emily, all, we always had lawyers to do that. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, but they're, they're, I was told they did it well. They did it well. And you know what? Your bill would be much smaller <laughs> if you brought. That, that's a good point. Your bill would be that's much right. smaller if you brought distributed ledger technology to that aspect of our financial system. So that there are all sorts of aspects of our financial system where I see this type of technology driving efficiency. Got it. And that's something which, uh, as the person responsible for the efficient functioning of the U.S. markets broadly defined, mm -hmm. you are you are optimistic about and prepared to encourage. Without a doubt, I, I am. I look. My lens is how can we improve what we're doing, in no way degrading investor protection. That's kind of how I look at a lot of what's going on, whether it's trading or issuance or, or other aspects of what we do at the SEC. Like you described, a, a permanent, what we describe in this world as a permanent immutable record subject to audit. That serves your purpose as well, I would imagine. Serves our purposes very well. The, um, so let's move on from the infrastructure uh, element of, of this world to currencies. Um, you, you said uh, when currencies act as a replacement when, when digital assets act as a replacement for a sovereign currency, dollar, yen, are operating as uh, securities because they seem to be without central third parties and the highly decentralized networks. The issue of the moment uh, is, of course, what is XRP? Mm -hmm. uh, runs on the Ripple network. Um, there are a lot of people in this audience who would like to know, um, uh, but I think it's your... Uh, I, I, I know from long-standing practice, the SEC does not talk about matters that are in front of them at the moment. So I'm not, so not going to ask you that because I, I know you won't give me an answer. Uh, and it's not just you. It's all your predecessors wouldn't give me the answer either. I get it. Don't worry. Um, I'm no better than they are. <laughs> but what's the process by which this is determined and, and the timing? When does the marketplace know the outcome of this really important question? Because as you know, Ripple right now is, is the second largest market cap uh, token after Bitcoin. I think, I think I'll go back to what I said, is, is that we, we are open to people coming in to see us, engage with us, discuss their particular situation, um, and work through it with us. And some of the, I will, I will tell you, some of these questions, um, you know, require, require a lot of information in order to get to a definitive uh, position. Right. Some, some, many are very obvious. You know, I'm selling you my, my token. Uh, I'm going to go off and uh, you know produce a venture, and uh, hopefully you'll get uh, a return for for having purchased that token. And I assume, like at other uh, these these situations, um, having a consistency of message as between the SEC and your investors is a probably a important kind of starting point. Yeah, let, let me just say this: we're we're very very open to people coming in to see us. Uh, but I hope it doesn't come as a surprise that when you tell us about your your approach, that what you tell us is the same thing you're telling people who you want to invest in your venture. If there's a big gap between what you're telling us and the way you're marketing your venture, 
It's not a good place to start? It's not a good place to start. <laughs> okay. Everybody taking notes out there got that one down? Um, but just saying a classic securities offering, get yourself a good on those exchanges. No. Well, let's, let's see how this evolves. Okay. Got it. Uh, and then on the custody piece of it, uh, I assume that that looks just more like a technical problem inside the industry where the, the custody tools and technologies need to be um, improved and hardened. Yeah, and look, I think we've seen some thefts around digital assets that, you know, make you scratch your head. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so one last question. I know I think we're, we're basically out of time, but I'm going to continue with one last question. Um, uh, I'm a captive audience. <laughs> so you've talked about, uh, talk about how you've built capacity at the SEC to understand the digital currency ecosystem. I know you have a group here in New York. You recently announced the launch of the Fin Hub mm -hmm. that will focus on um, issues related to ICOs and digital assets. What's the purpose of the Fin Hub? What, what role do you see it playing uh, in this space going forward? And how can the folks in this room interact, interact with it? It's there to provide a centralized resource for people from uh, the private sector who want to interact with us and, and see what we have been doing in this space um, to date. It's, it's, it's basically a conduit um, to contact the SEC. Okay. And how do folks here find that? It's available online? Yes, www.sec.gov. And it's a guide, it's a way for them to guide, come into your system. To, come into our uh, system, understand our perspective, um, get you know, more flesh on the bones of the issues you and I have been discussing today. Okay, great. So are you going to answer the first question? Are you long Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, thank you very much for taking the time with us today. Really thank appreciate it. Global liquidity to any market, any country, any place, anywhere. Fully exchangeable to any currency, asset, or commodity. Transactions are settled in four seconds. XRP is traded 24-7, 365 days a year, everywhere in the world. Removing friction from global trade. Removing barriers. Removing borders. XRP transfers value anytime and all the time. From you to any place on earth.